welcome back to my channel. So basically, uh, I apologize for not putting in uh, the video over the last few months. It's been really busy. Um, but here is a video on radon. Um, so let's uh, focus on radon gas. So what is radon gas is a dangerous. So all the research that I'm going to talk about can be got from the EPU's website. Uh, so do your own research as well and look for reliable sources to get this information. Um, so radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas that causes sun cancer. Um, so this is again a graph that is plotted from into your website. So radon uh, causes uh, uh, more deaths than um, all other things that kind of kill us. So basically we need to take on take radon very seriously. Um, so radon is not colorless and odorless uh, gas. Um, and it occurs naturally in those amounts in the atmosphere. And um, when you're outside, this uh, gas, radon gas, is working very rapidly. Um, so it's not an issue, but if it's uh, inside the home, schools, and workplaces where the same air is circulated a few times before it is, uh, it is actually mixed with the uh, air from outside, um, it's a problem that is we could actually be breathing this air uh, quite more than what we would need to do it. So basically, um, this is not a good thing, uh, but the, the best part of this is you can actually control it, and it can be managed with uh, proven and cost-effective techniques that if you um, have a certain way of mitigating radon that is trapped inside the house. So this is actually a map uh, that is uh, plotted by these scientists who have actually uh, tried to track down the various uh, level of uh, radon all throughout the world. So this is not a USA problem. This is a problem everywhere in the world. So this is everyone that is probably listening to this video is probably exposed to radon, and we need to take radon quite seriously. Um, so basically, uh, every country has some level of radon. Again, uh, this is a map that is provided by EPA. So anything that is in red in the U.S. is kind of like uh, leaking high amounts of uh, um, radon from the uh, Earth's crust, and uh, anything that is yellow is less likely to be uh, radon. So you can also go to this particular website, radonmap.com, and it will use links below to actually uh, go and see what are the different radon levels reported by different pieces in the area. So there are various sources of radon uh, that can get into your house, so the cracks on your uh, concrete uh, basement floors, and the construction joints, the cracks on your walls, gaps in the suspended floors, and gaps in the service pipe, as well as cavities in the earth and water supply. So there are different ways. Uh, so right now we have uh, like a guideline on how to actually build new homes uh, based on this particular information. So EPA gives this particular graph. Um, so basically, um, in, in this, uh, what they're saying is you probably need a gravel base before you put the foundation and then put some, some kind of uh, vapor barrier over here. Um, then you attach a wind pipe as well as actually uh, seal and pop all the joints that you build your basement for as well as create an electrical junction just in case in the future, you want to make this an active uh, radon vent pipe. Um, so this is a, a passive system. Um, so basically, this is without a fan that kind of pushes the fan out. But if, if you want to convert this in the future, you don't have to hire an electrical person to come and put in junction box in your computer. So in my house, so basically, um, when they were doing the construction, I went and saw what are the different pipes and where they come and exit. Uh, so there are two pipes that go in the back of the house. So one of them is a fuel vent, another one is a radon filter vent. Uh, that is over here on this side of the house. Uh, so basically, uh, our construction, I took a picture before they actually closed uh, everything and put in insulation in the top part over here. They actually uh, put in an electrical outlet over there, and this is that exhaust pipe over there. So you see there's kind of a pitch over here that is in case there is water which kind of like switches out and then goes to the basement. Um, so basically um, this is a, a good way to actually get rid of uh, radon gas passively uh, out of the basement. So um, different levels of radon, so radon, are, uh, radon levels are actually measured at 
uh, the query uh, per liter. Uh, so basically, um, this uh, anything that is above um, four, um, you you should panic. That is, you need to go and try to mitigate it, try to get the radon out of your house. Um, if, if you're cons consistently having a value somewhere between two to four, you might want to consider that um, as an issue as well and try to fix it as well. But if it is below two, so somewhere around one point three or less. That, that is the level that you want to be at. So basically, this is the, this is what is safe, and this amount of radiation is equivalent to um, something that one person would get exposed to once when they are massively um, exposed to the things that kind of have these kind of radiation. Um, so basically, this is the goal that is you want to stay below one point three. Um, and if it is anything above that, try to act to it. So, um, so here is another company that has things that kind of like simplifies it for you. So it says anything 2.7 or less, you're okay. You don't have to take any action. And anything above that, try to monitor it and um, try to mitigate radon in the future. So uh, I decided to buy this uh, radon wave. Um, a particular model from Air Things. They have other models. Uh, and this was, I think, two years ago. So this is what they had at that point of time. So they have multiple models where they can actually measure other things as well. So why I chose this is probably because I wanted to mainly measure radon, but also measure humidity and temperature at some point of time. And uh, the, the good thing about uh, this particular system is, so if you were to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or Minot, any one of your home uh, improvement stores, you will get the radon kit. So basically, you take that sample, put it in a basement for a certain amount of time, follow the instruction that will give you there, and then you ship it to a company that actually measures the amount of radiation that it has been exposed to, and then you take that value and then uh, see if that is uh, above or below the action limit. Uh, but in uh, case of this, this is basically a diagonal counter which has uh, a, a tube that kind of like monitors your alpha wave that comes out of uh, radon. So basically, uh, the beauty of this is it actually monitors it as a function of time. So you can actually continuously monitor the level of radon in your house. And um, it also has a little bit of memory on it. So basically, it stores. Um, not only the short-term reading, as well as the, uh, the long-term uh, reading as well. So basically, from this, you can actually see how, what is the average or median exposure to radiation, that is, the radiation from radon um, as a function of time. And um, you have uh, the changing LEDs, so green, red, and yellow, can also indicate the three different levels that uh, they showed earlier. And uh, this is battery operated and use the LE. So these are the very good things about this particular model and this particular device, the sensor, uh, whatever you want to call this. Um, but why I like this particular company is because they have a GitHub page where they tell you how you can read with the DLE value, that is the Bluetooth uh, low energy value from this um, uh, sensor. So basically, they are actually promoting um, the the they were reading these values and actually storing it. And you can do whatever you want with those values. And uh, I really like that. So basically, they're kind of like showing exactly what you need to do to read these values. And of course, being a part of home assistant community, someone built a custom component. I'm going to leave uh, the links below where you can actually um, use this custom component. And if you have a Raspberry Pi that has um, PLE built in, you can use this particular component to actually read the value from here. The only caveat being this Raspberry Pi needs to be in the same room as this. It doesn't really doesn't travel that far. And basically, that is the whole purpose, right? So basically, this needs to be really close by to actually get the live reading for a uh, long period of time. Or if you have a different uh, device that had DLE on it, yeah, it, will, it will read the value from here and actually update it. So uh, what I did instead is I just took a USB 32 um, that I had lying around, and uh, someone on GitHub had already written um, the, the the code to actually read the BLE values from this particular sensor, and then parse it, uh, convert it to the standard format that you like, 
and then uh, put it on a mosquito or an uh, cell bar um, in your home system. So basically, once you have the data in the home system, you can uh, plot it and you can create alerts and uh, basically you can actually plot it as a function of time and monitor it. Um, so this is the beauty of open source. So basically, because they've opened the way that we can read the VLE values, now there are multiple ways to actually get the value from the sensor all the way into your former system. All you need is one of the ESP32 devices. So um, our home uh, was totally fine for the first few years. Um, so the beauty of uh, having the continuous monitor is that um, in, in probably April of 2020, I started seeing high values around four. Um, from the sensors, uh, it was well below two for uh, more than a year, and then it started peaking. So basically, it started at the level of four initially, then it went to 3.7 and 7.8, so which kind of like is really, really high. Okay? So this uh, means that I need to do some kind of mitigation uh, on top of not just monitoring it. So this wouldn't have been possible if I had just taken the sensors or uh, the kits that we get from the home improvement stores and just monitored it when I bought the house. So basically, the continuous monitoring kind of helped me out over here, as in it kind of like helping in getting these values uh, as uh, an indicator that, hey, I have a radon issue in the house, even though I have a passive uh, vent that is in the in, in uh, built uh, when the, in the house is built, it was totally incorporated into it, but still, I'm getting these high values. So that could be multiple reasons for it. So a uh, lot of actions uh, probably uh, need to be taken. So um, in, in uh, last year in June, so what um, me and my wife did is we went and sealed um, the, the concrete basement. So all this needed was uh, one part epoxy or a vapor barrier. You can use anything that kind of like steeps the concrete. Um, this is a kind of easy way to actually kind of uh, make sure that the radon gas doesn't come through the concrete, the holes in the concrete. Um, so the second thing that we had to do is uh, use 100% uh, uh, silicon talk and the cocking zone and went and filled in any holes that we saw, even though the builder had filled the corners, we still had some uh, get peeled off, so we had to like, remove that and uh, fill in any gaps that we found uh, with 100% silicone, um, kind of like seals it, and it takes around a day for it to dry. Um, and the last and most important thing was to add a radon mitigation system. So what this is, is pretty much a radon fan, a three-prong appliance uh, electrical pod, as well as a three-inch rubber coupler. So basically the pipe that I have, the three-inch uh, pipe, so that's why I need a coupler, so that you can couple the fan with the pipe. And you need a, something called a monitor, uh, which kind of like measures how much suction that you have through the fan that is continuously running out the way. So basically, these are very special uh, devices that are these fans that are made to run for years, that right? they don't stop to continuously uh, create a suction that kind of like tries to remove the radon from the pipes that are connected to your um, the foundation of the pipes. So we went ahead and put uh, epoxy, uh, I think a one coat epoxy over here, and uh, we kind of sealed um, any kind of crack that we saw with some silicone. And then this is the sprayed on pipe that is a three inch pipe over here. Um, so this goes all the way up into the attic. So over here we have the manometer. So the manometer uh, before you connect the upper end into the hole over here. You need to make sure that this is zero. Um, you can actually move this guy up and down to make sure that this is zero. And once this is set to zero, uh, connect the tube over here, drill a hole for the correct size to mention what type hole you need. Drill that and then seal all this with silicone and make sure that this side is kept open. So that way this can actually measure if there's suction inside this or when you turn on the fan, you know, this guy rises. The amount of rise determines how much air is actually being pulled through. And also this is an easy check to see if the fan is running. Um, so, yeah. So this is a particular model that I bought. So this is kind of 
is sold as a kit. It has the fan over here, it has the electrical cord over here, it has the manometer, it has the couplers, uh, the exact couplers that I needed. And basically, uh, this kind of was perfect for what I had. Um, here the video of how much CFM that you can actually achieve by this particular fan that is connected to various static pressures. Uh, and uh, this is kind of like the critical installation that they recommend, that is, have the fan in the FE, so um, you then you have an electrical outlet, so you kind of connect that, and, and then um, put your manometer somewhere on this. Um, so basically, uh, what I did was actually took these couplers, connected it to these ends, um, then uh, went uh, up into the attic, and um, use a hacksaw and like uh, cut this uh, pipe and put this over here um, and then tighten all the screws. Um, so basically, once that was done, it connected then the manometer in the basement of the house. So I'm happy uh, to say that uh, over the last year, uh, I'm getting valued well below 1.5 uh, from this particular uh, sensor. Um, I've changed the battery a few times, so basically uh, the battery lasts in around eight months or so. Um, we have the uh, uh, standard AA batteries. Um, so these are the values that are reported at home assisted. I plotted this usually, uh, so this is plotted as a function of seven days. And uh, these are the more current levels, so you can get your uh, current 24 um, hour um, rerun reading, you can get temperature, humidity. Uh, the new humidifier works great, so that is the put thing there. And uh, again, um, then basically, this is the long-term value that it stores that you can access. So basically, as long as this value is less than 1.5, you're good. So basically, the mitigation system works, and uh, I'm really happy that I'm not breathing in this toxic gas. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to say is, um, if you have an issue, you see how continuous monitoring and creating these home automations to actually give you these kind of like readings as well as uh, you can create alerts where you can act upon the readings with erroneous readings that you get to actually uh, save yourself. And this is a big health issue and you probably are um, kind of like unknowingly being exposed to this particular um, radon gas uh, out of our lives and hopefully this Inspires you to go ahead and like monitor them as well as uh, create uh, proper mitigation to actually get rid of this particular that and uh, uh, breathe in you. Um, so, um, thank you for watching. Uh, see you in my next video.